In today's lesson, we're going to look at solving multi-step equations when there's a variable on both sides of the equal sign. So it's important that you simplify the expression on each side of the equal sign first. So we want to make sure that we simplify each side of the equal sign. How do we do this? We will use the distributive property to get rid of our parentheses. And that's that little, I draw my little arrows. That's when we multiply. Then we'll combine like terms if necessary. And you actually use the distributive property if necessary. You won't always use the distributive property. But if you see the parentheses, we're going to use the, uh, the distributive property to get rid of those. And then we'll move the variable to one side and solve. So let's look at number one. So on number one, what I really like to do is draw a line down my equal sign. And the ultimate goal is to get x all by itself. That equal sign stays on that line, and then everything else is on the other side. So what we need to do here is simplify each side of the, the expressions on each side of the equal sign. And actually, I don't need to do that. Okay, I don't see any parentheses, so I'm not going to use the distributive property. I don't have any like terms that I need to combine. So they're actually both simplified. So at this point, now I need to move the variable to one side of the equal sign. I really like to move my variables to the left side. I don't always do that, but I really like to. It helps when we get into our inequalities. So I'm going to move this 3x to the other side, the whole term to the other side. How do I do that? I subtract 3x. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And which term is it going to affect on the other side? The one that it is a like term with. So I'm going to subtract 3x over here. It obviously cancels out on the right side. I'm left with 29 equals. Then 12x minus 3x is 9x. And then now I've got a basic two-step equation. So I'm going to undo this addition by subtracting 2. I'm left with 9x equals 27, and then what do I do at this point? Divide by 9, and I get x equals 3. And then how can I check my work? I can plug in 3 for x. When I plug it in here, and I plug it in here, I get the same thing on the left and right side of the equal sign. So let's go to number 2. So number 2 is a great example of when we have variables on both sides of the equal sign and I only have one term that's an x on the right side. So in this case, I'm actually going to move this term right here, this 3x, to the other side. How do I do that? I'm going to subtract 3x, and it affects that term. So how do I know that I need to subtract 3x here? Well, if there's no sign in front, it's assumed positive. How do you undo addition? You subtract. So that's why I'm going to subtract 3x. And I'm left with negative 10 equals 2 times x. And then now, how do I get x all by itself over here on the right side? I'm going to divide by 2. And I get x equals negative 5. All right, let's move on to number 3. So what do you see on number 3 that's different than number 1 and number 2? I see parentheses, so obviously I need to use the distributive property, everything gets multiplied by negative 3, to simplify what's on the left side. So when I multiply by negative 3, make sure you're thinking about your integer rules, I get negative 6x plus 15. And I'm going to rewrite what's on the right side. And then now we're back to what looks like our problem from number 1 where we need to move our variables to one side. I don't have any like terms that I need to combine, so I'm done simplifying both sides of this equal sign. So how do I move this 4x to the other side? What am I going to do? I'm going to subtract it. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other, and I'm moving that entire term. That's how you can think about it, okay? I'm moving the entire term. So when I subtract it, positive and negative of the same amount, they cancel out, so I'm left with negative 5 on the right side, 
and then I'm left with negative 10x plus 15. So I do have students that struggle with this negative 6x minus 4x. What I do is if you ever, if you watch my videos over the integer rules and stuff, I look at that and I sing same signs, add and keep. So I'm going to add 6 and 4 and then I keep the sign. You can always do negative 6 minus 4 on your calculator. You could also do negative 6 plus negative 4 on your calculator. That's the same thing. So then now we're back to our basic two-step equation. So what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract 15. And keeping in mind my integer rules, I get negative 20. And then at this point, I divide by negative 10. So x equals positive 2. Okay, let's go on to number four. So now I see parentheses, and I'm going to zoom in here. I see parentheses on both sides of the equal sign. So I actually need to get rid of both of those sets of parentheses. So I'm going to distribute a four into every term in these parentheses, and I'm going to distribute a 0.5, which is just one half. When I take half, when I'm multiplying any number by one half, I'm just taking half of that number. Okay, or that number divided by two. Another thing that really helps students is if you ever don't see a number in front of a variable, what can I put there? I can put a one. Okay, so in front of this x, I can put a one there. So four times one x is four x. Then four times negative three is negative 12. And then when I multiply one half times each of these terms, I get two x plus two. And again, we're back to where we were on our example from number one. So what do I need to do at this point? I need to move my x term to one side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna get rid of it on the right side by subtracting two x, but what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Otherwise my equation isn't balanced. So those cancel, I'm left with two on the right side, and then two x minus 12 on the left. Now we're back to our basic two-step equation. I'm going to add 12 to get rid of the minus 12, and I get 2x equals 14. So then how do I undo this multiplication? I divide, what do I want to get rid of? The 2, so I'm dividing by 2, and I get x equals 7. So hopefully you're catching on at this point, seeing some similarities between the problems. Let's go on to number 5. Obviously they're getting more and more difficult as we move through the notes. So I'm gonna draw my line down this equal sign. We're, we obviously, I see parentheses, so I know I'm gonna have to do the, use the distributive property to get rid of those, and then I may even need to combine some like terms. So I have to simplify one side and then the other, and so that's what we're gonna do. Let's simplify the left side first. The first thing I'm gonna do is use the distributive property negative one half times every term on the inside of these parentheses is negative 2x plus 10 and then i have this minus 8 over here okay that doesn't go away it's a part of it so in this example this shows you hey i need to combine like terms these are my two like terms so when i combine those what do i get positive 2. okay so now let's simplify the other side. I obviously need to distribute this three to get rid of these parentheses. Distribute, multiply, what do I get? Negative 12x plus 27. And I don't have anything to combine over there, so I'm just gonna rewrite it right here. And now we're back to where we were on that first example. What do I do? Move my variables to one side. So I like to box them across the equal sign. That shows me, okay, when I move this minus 12x or negative 12x to the other side, this is the one I'm combining it with. This one is not, it's not a like term. It's not going to affect that constant right there. So I'm left with 27 on the right, negative two and positive 12 makes positive 10. X, last name stays the same and then plus two, so 10x plus two. What do I do at this point now? Back to a basic two-step equation. I'm gonna subtract two, 
So I get 10x equals 25. And then now what do I do? I divide by 10. But wait a second. We don't have a nice, pretty integer here. Well, you know what? That's totally okay. Okay, you're going to have some numbers that I call ugly numbers, and it's totally fine if that's your answer. But what I would suggest doing is always going back and checking your work. So this is an improper fraction. In an upper level math, you can just leave it as an improper fraction, but you must simplify it. So 25 over 10, if I divide both my numerator and denominator by 5, I'm going to get 5 over 2. And I can leave it just like that. X equals 5 over 2. Okay, every teacher that you will ever have in upper level math knows that this is 2.5. And if you wrote 2.5 as your answer, I'm sure your teacher will take that as well. The only thing I don't like is if you ever get something like this, x equals one third, and you write x equals 0.33. Nope, that's not the same, okay, in upper level math. 0.33 is one third rounded, okay? We don't really like that. So some teachers might let you use that um, repeating bar up there. That would actually be the same. I really like the fractions, okay? For the repeating decimals, I really like the fractions. Okay, so let's move on to number six. This is our last example. Whew, this is a lot, but we'll get through it together. Okay, so obviously I'm going to draw a line down my equal sign and I'm going to be using the distributive property. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the parentheses by distributing a 7 there and distributing a negative 6 there. Remember, sign in front goes with the number, so I'm multiplying everything by negative 6. So in this first um, set of parentheses, I'm going to get 14x plus 7 and the negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6, negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Okay, and now let's go ahead and combine like terms. We're going to simplify each side first. So 14x and negative 6, those are my like terms. When I combine those, what do I get? 8x. And then 7 and 6 those are like terms and you know i have students who circle they put you know boxes around like terms triangles around like terms they might use different color highlighters whatever you want here i'm just multiplying by or i'm sorry i'm just underlining a different number of lines right so this 14x negative 6x they get one line these constants right here they get two lines so 7 plus 6 is 13 and we can't simplify it anymore, so let's go to the other side. I'm going to distribute a negative 5 into both of these terms and a positive 2 into both of these terms. So what do I end up getting? Negative 15 minus 10x plus 4x plus 14. And now let's combine like terms. I like to, I'm combining my x's first. So negative 10x and positive 4x. Obviously, different signs subtract, so I'm going to get negative 6x. And then I have a negative, four, negative 15 and a positive 14. When I combine those, different signs subtract as well. I get minus 1. And now, after we've distributed, combine like terms on both sides of the equal sign, now we're back to where we were on number 1. Move our variables to one side. So I'm going to add 6x. Right, that's the opposite of subtracting 6x, or that's the inverse operation. So I'm left with negative 1 on the right side, and then 8x plus 6x is 14x plus 13. And now we're back to our basic two-step equation. So we have just been building to this. I'm going to subtract 13. 14x equals negative 14. And then at this point, what am I going to do? Divide by 14, and I get x equals negative 1. And this concludes your notes over solving multi-step equations when you have a variable on both sides. I hope it was helpful.